Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fall. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Well, let's talk about where that leads to, Congresswoman. You've raised a good point here. I guess for you, it is important. If we find out that uh, somebody on behalf of Donald Trump was on the phone or in email relations with somebody in Russia or the, Amer- the, Amer- the ambassador to America from Russia, and there was some sort of, as you call it, collusion, then what? Does that make Trump subject to impeachment? What do you mean by not legitimate? Just generally well, what you mean by the term. Well, here's If you find what out there was a connection, there was collusion, your term. Well, here's what I'm trying to get to. If we discover that Donald Trump or his advocates played a role in helping to devise strategy, if they're the ones who came up with crooked Hillary, if they're the ones who came up with she's ill, something's wrong with her energy, and the way that he uh, basically, you know, described her in the campaign, I think that is something that would put the question squarely on the table whether or not he should be impeached. So you think it's a, you can have an impeachable offense before you take office, in other words? Well, I think that at the point that investigations discover and can confirm and document any of that, that they had a role in helping to strategize, they had a role in attempting to determine the outcome, that in many ways they used the information okay. that they got from the DNC when they hacked into our emails, et cetera, if that was used against Hillary Clinton in some ways, yes, I think that's impeachable. Let me respond to that, John. Well, Two points, what the Russians did and what Trump did. Answer them both ways. If Trump did... I love that. The I word. He hasn't even put his hand on art of the deal. Vladimir Putin hasn't even sworn him in yet. And uh, we're talking the I word. Yay. All right. So I have a bet out there with a guy who's going to have to buy me dinner because this is going to happen pretty fast. And, you know, he's dividing the republic. First of all, let let me just say this. At least 50 now. Five zero. At least 50 House members are boycotting the inauguration. Fifty. Yes. And the ones who are going are just going to see Jackie Avancho, I think. I, I think get an iPod if you want. To, if you want. And, and by the way, I, I don't know if this is true. Maybe somebody out there is smarter than I am when it comes to uh, how the ratings are collected by the TV people. But I think I've heard this. I don't know if this is true. So, uh, you know, I hate to say stuff that I can't document. But somebody is passing around some information that says that if you don't watch the inaugural, but your TV is off and you usually watch news or cable news, it might count as someone who watched the inaugural. I don't know how that would be, but so they suggest that you turn your television on, but make sure it's like on the History Channel or make sure it's like on, uh, 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 you know, the, the Cartoon Channel or, or something like this, uh, Spike or Logo, Do you know, uh, that way the inaugural ratings will be way, way down. Because, you know, and, and oh, this is like so crazy. Donald Trump is uh, literally using Facebook ads to get people to go uh, to his inaugural uh, uh, the, the, the night before at the Lincoln uh, Memorial. He can't attract any. It, it's so amazing. You know, no one wants to go to this thing. In fact, I, today uh, uh, I read a newspaper story where a scalper. I could tell you his last name's Rosenberg, but a scalper who's like an IT guy by day and then, you know, gets some side income by scalping tickets. Um, he's trying to unload some inaugural tickets that he bought off a of Craigslist for seven hundred dollars. And he can't find anybody to take those tickets off his hands. And so what he did was he went to white supremacist websites like Stormfront to try and unload the tickets because he knows his target audience. Uh, and he still he can't unload the tickets. He, nobody wants these damn tickets. And then um, people who are trying to unsubscribe to Donald Trump's notifications because I got them during the uh, campaign. I wanted to see everything that uh, you know he was sending out so that I would know that he was... 
that that he wasn't funding his own campaign. There wasn't a chance. I mean, you had PACs, you had super PACs, and then you had him hitting people up for money and selling stuff, you know, the hats and the, all these other things. But anyway, um, he said over the weekend, you know, my inauguration has turned out to be even bigger than expected. And so far, the top bookings include Toby Keith and Ange- jo- Angelina Jolie's dad, John Voight. Maybe they can get Clint Eastwood's chair to show up. I don't know. I don't know if Nuge, the Nuge, is going to bother, uh, you know, uh, to go and play bad guitar for him. But I can tell you that these, the Bruce Springsteen cover band that I was telling you about, B, the B Street band, they just pulled out. <laughs> They said, sorry, but we make a living off of the Bruce's uh, music, and the Bruce really uh, would not appreciate that uh, we are playing his music at this man's annoyance. So they're out, so that's not going to happen either. And uh, Three Doors Down, which I'm surprised because I, I, am, I know I'm the only one. Nobody, I mean, it, it, it even made a joke on Saturday Night Live that they got Three Doors Down. People laughed at that. Why is that funny? I like that band. Thank God all their good music has been, you know, already done and I purchased it long ago. Uh, I would sell it to a white supremacist group if they wanted to buy my Three Doors Down library now uh, because I've listened to it over and over again and I can, you know, live without it. But um, I don't know why they're making fun of Three Doors Down. I would like to ask Three Doors Down not to play. Come here and play live in my studio for a whole hour if you'd like. I like the song When I'm Gone. I play that song over and over again thinking about Trump. Maybe you could dedicate it uh, to him at the inaugural. But anyway, he's using Facebook ads. Here's what they look like. This is so amazing. He's, oh, well, I can't make this full screen because it's an odd size. But here, watch this. We're going to do something incredible. It's going to be the Make America Great Again celebration at the Lincoln Memorial on the 19th. And that's going to be really fantastic. So I'll see you on January 19th. Very importantly, at the Lincoln Memorial at 4 o'clock. Oh, how beautiful. That's a Facebook ad that he's pumped out. Pence has it on his website. Anyway, some of the people uh, who got that Facebook ad, uh, they are tweeting things like, Trouble filling seats. I unsubscribed from the Trump list two times and I've gotten two emails in the last week to register for inauguration tickets. You can't get off his list. And I know this because last night that was like one of the last things that both Howard and I received uh, via our devices and none of which had a D battery in them. So, you know, what are they doing in my bed? It's not a good way to live. It's the end of human contact, everybody. The end of human contact. But the last thing that we did get last night was this ad to go to the Trump inaugural that like free tickets can be had and, you know, just everybody come because nobody wants to go. So, you know, the uh, latest estimates are about 700,000, but that includes protesters. Now, Barack Obama drew almost 2 million people in contrast, you see. And Trump is, is, is knowing this. He really is. So um, I don't know. I'm thinking I want to help him before he bombs something out of just sheer, you know, frustration and, uh, you know, arrogance because the narcissist can never be dissed without, you know, an equal and opposite reaction. So what about Ringling Brothers? What about that? These performers are about to lose their jobs and they could use a gig. And what would be better than having a giant elephant take a crap at Trump's inauguration? Nothing, everybody, nothing. Nothing would be better. He has no one. I mean, it's just an amazing thing. He has no one. The, the, the Bruce Springsteen cover band pulled out. I mean, at this point, he would lo- be, be lucky if he could, you know, book Alec Baldwin to be a Trump impersonator. Do you know? And that, that, I'm sure, is a big fat no, too. You don't even have to wonder, would he do it? Would he? No. The answer is no. So... Anyway, today's news is so bizarre. First of all, let me remind you, it's like a a quarter after four Eastern time, if you're listening live. Um, And at five o'clock Eastern time, Betsy DeVos of the Prince family, who married into the Amway DeVos family, the multi-multi-billionaires, the Ponzi scheme billionaires. Her brother is Eric Prince, formerly of uh, uh, Blackwater, now called Z, defense contractors, Well, she's up for our Secretary of Education at 5 o'clock, so we'll brief you about her record in Detroit 
and we'll show you why she should never get near uh, the Department of Education. And the same goes for Tom Price, who is the Health and Human Services Secretary nominee. His hearing will be tomorrow. And uh, Tom Price now is under investigation for violations of the Stock Act, which basically says Congressman uh, Tom Price cannot... Uh, be involved in insider trading, meaning he can't trade based on information he gleans as a congressman. And it turns out that he may have. And so these are going to be the, the, the questions that are going to be hurled at Betsy DeVos about her track record in Detroit's uh, uh, charter schools. And, and, you know, now she wants vouchers written into the Constitution. Basically, she wants to do away with the Department of Education. And basically, she wants to do away with public education. She doesn't, she doesn't believe in it. She believes in private education only. And that we all should get a voucher and then go shop around for a school, a for-profit school, to send our children. Except that she's already experimented with this in Detroit with abysmal, amazing, substandard, incredibly heinous results. And now she'd like to spread this across the Americas, you know, anyway, ours. So I, I'm going to uh, uh, go over uh, what she did. Now, in the meantime, uh, I got to tell you that uh, Maxine Waters just made history because she was the first out of the box to mention the I word. The man isn't even sworn in yet. His approval ratings are anywhere. It just depends on, you know, like uh, which poll you're looking at. But his disapproval ratings are higher than his approval ratings. And this is like the first time that's ever happened. That's how... Because the people who voted for him, especially independents who, you know, probably would have voted, uh, you know, for Hillary, had Comey not come forward, had the WikiLeaks not been leaked like that, had the, um, uh, the, the, the idea that she's still under investigation been spread 10 days before, you know, they probably uh, would have just uh, held their nose and voted for Hillary. But instead, uh, it seems like Putin, oh, and Putin, by the way, gave a speech today. This is just so amazing to me. Putin gave a speech today that one-upped even Donald Trump's nasty little tweets, okay? Putin is defending Donald Trump by trashing our intelligence agencies, okay? And Donald Trump yesterday and the day before trashed our intelligence agency. I mean, Putin and, and Trump have so much in common now. So Putin held a news conference today, and he was talking about this 35-page report, which our intelligence agencies did not develop, Okay, that was an MI6 officer who's still in hiding. Nobody knows where he is. Christopher Steele, uh, formerly of MI6 Russia. He headed the Russia desk for uh, uh, the top uh, you know, uh, intelligence um, agency in Britain. And then when he saw that he wasn't going to get the top job at MI6 because their focus had shifted from Russia to terrorism, to, uh, you know, um, a, a ter a terrorist extremists, he left. He resigned in 2009, started his own intelligence firm as you know he's the one that created the dossier that was paid for by gop operatives who were doing opposition research on trump at the behest of one of the primary candidates against donald trump we don't know who it is might be marco rubio it could be jeb bush who had a ton of money it could have been ted cruz it could have been and which is probably why donald trump's brain went to the russians killing jfk Lee Harvey Oswald, remember? And he said Ted Cruz is dead. This is probably why it was top of mind for him, okay? And it's probably something some Russian idiot told him to say. So that's what Maxine Waters was referring to, that if he got any any advice, if they colluded, the Russian, uh, you know, uh, government, the Russian ambassadors, whatever it was, the oligarchs, whatever, that if they colluded and she could, uh, you know, prove it, that uh, it would be an impeachable offense. Now, Putin gave a speech today defending Donald Trump, of all people. It's an amazing thing. And he said, um, he was he, during a press conference, he said that this was a last ditch attempt on the part of President Obama's outgoing administration to undermine the legitimacy of the president elect. Uh, he went on to say, and this is amazing, prostitution is an ugly social phenomenon. Why is prostitution on the top of his mind? As he defends Donald Trump. Hmm. But he said, um, prostitution is an ugly social phenomenon, but people who order such fakes, which are now used against the elected president of the United States, fabricate information and use it in the political struggle. They are worse than prostitutes. 
They have no moral limits. Then he said, you know, Trump, when he came to Moscow a few years ago, was not a politician. We did not even know about his political ambitions. He was just a businessman, one of the richest men in America. Is someone really thinking that our intelligence agencies are chasing every American billionaire or what? Of course not. It's just complete nonsense. But then he added, I find it hard to believe that he rushed to some hotel to meet girls of loose morals, although ours are undoubtedly the best in the world. (laughs) why is he thinking about prostitution so much when talking about the donald what what makes that top of mind just like what made donald trump say that ted cruz's father was responsible for the killing of jfk as ordered by you know russians I mean, it, it, it's just, it, it's so amazing how these, and, and, and what's really interesting, you know, is of course Trump keeps insisting and kept insisting during the campaign that he has nothing to do with Russia. Nothing, nothing, nothing. 15 or 16 years, every year I have a routine audit, under audit, when the audit's complete, I'll release them. But zero, I mean, I will tell you right now, zero, I have nothing to do with Russia. I've released my papers, 104 pages of documents. I built an unbelievable company, unbelievable. tremendous cash, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. Company, some of the great assets of the world. You've seen it. You were all very disappointed when you saw it, actually, but that's OK. Far, far greater than anybody ever thought. I have a great company. I built an unbelievable company. But if you look there, you'll see there's nothing in Russia. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. Let's see if that happens. That'll be next. That'll be next. Um, So yesterday, uh, right around the time I got home, that's me, sorry, let let me pause that. So yesterday when I got home, there was this New York Times article. And the title of it is For Trump... Three decades of chasing deals in Russia. And it goes through this whole long list of attempts that Donald Trump's company has made over the last 30 years to build a Trump Tower in Moscow. And it says, you know, that uh, letters of intent had been signed and square footage was being analyzed for turning an old pencil factory in Moscow into uh, the Trump hotel and condo. Okay, and 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 he's and and this is a a quote from um, a guy named Felix Sater in 2005. He's a Russian immigrant and he was back in Moscow and he was pursuing Trump's dream of building the Trump Tower in Moscow at this old pencil factory. And he said letters of intent had been signed and square footage was being analyzed. There was an opportunity to explore building Trump Towers internationally, said Mr. Sater, who worked for a New York based development company that was a partner with Donald J. Trump on a variety of deals during that decade. And Russia was one of those countries, he said. And then, of course, you have Donald Trump Jr. saying, oh, all the apartments are being sold to the Russians. Russian money is just pouring in here. And boy, I love Moscow. Been there 18 times. What a great city. Ivanka's been there, too, hanging out with Wendy Deng, who's married to Putin, and saying, uh, oh, this is such a big, great city. We definitely want to build uh, in, in, in Moscow. It would be so great. And she was staying in the, uh, you know, a legendary hotel next door to the Kremlin and all this. And so they said, you know, uh, that the project at the pencil factory fizzled and that Trump blamed some guy who wrote a book about him who said that Trump wasn't half as rich as he was declaring he was, was responsible for that deal fizzling. And Trump sued the author of that book for libel and, of course, lost. I never lose. I never lose. I never settle. Because that would, you know, encourage other people to, you know, sue me and I would settle. I never do that. I never. Yeah, he lost that. And then remember, three years ago, Donald Trump was in Russia just three years ago. Only three. It was the the Miss Universe pageant. And uh, in 2013, he was in Moscow and he sold a Russian real estate company, developers, the right to host the Miss Universe pageant that year, 
and he used the visit as a chance to discuss development deals. He wrote on Twitter at the time. He only had about 7,900 uh, people following him. But he wrote on Twitter at the time, in all caps, Trump Tower Moscow is next. And then he started running for president. And today you have Putin talking about prostitution being an ugly social phenomenon, but that the people who leaked or or facilitated the leak of uh, this 35-page dossier are, are worse than prostitutes. Although he said, I find it hard to believe that he rushed to some hotel to meet girls of loose morals, although ours are undoubtedly the best in the world. Have you sampled the wares? How would you know this? Vlad. So fascinating. And of course, 50 House members will not be attending the inaugural, choosing not to celebrate this man on that day. Wow. And by the way, you can get free tickets. <laughs> Commercial free, on demand, whenever, wherever listening experience. Visit randyrhodes.com for your personal premium podcast today. Go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.